Welcome to Prestige Radio with Nicole Doss. This is the place where the girl boss can grab the gems that she needs to shatter glass ceilings. Whether you're looking to climb a ladder that you've created through your own brand, or if you're looking to climb your corporate ladder as well, this is the place for you. So come on in. I have a seat ready for you. And girl, we have some things to talk about. Hey, 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 everyone. It's your girl, Nicole Doss, with another awesome episode of Pink Radio with Prestige. I am so excited to be here. I know it's been a while, and I feel so bad because I keep promising you guys that I'm going to get back to having weekly um, episodes posted. But I got to be honest with you. I have been in this space where I have been exploring and finding myself, trying to figure out how I want to reinvent my business, if I want to reinvent my business, all while still keeping my business going and focusing on me. And in doing so, I have not been really into posting new episodes. And I feel so bad saying it, but you know what? I just got to be honest with myself. If I'm honest with myself, I want to be honest with my listeners because I love you guys and I know that you're listening and I have been getting messages. I've been talking to some of you who are like, okay, um, I'm all caught up on all the episodes. So I'm, uh, when you're going to go ahead and post some new content. So this is for those of you that are my diehards. This episode is for those, or for those of you who are patiently waiting. And I got to tell you, it's probably not going to be a long episode, but that feels very reminiscent where I always say it's not going to be a long episode. And then I end up talking to you an hour later, but I know for sure it will not be an hour because I have places to be and little ones to see. And so therefore an hour will not, uh, (laughs) will not work for me today. So, and when I say little people, I mean like the little people or person that I created in my womb for nine months, not meaning peons or anything of that nature. So just my little one, it's time for me to get her for school. So with that being said, I want to talk about And I feel like I want to name this thing, you know, false doctrine of the girl boss number two, but we're not going to go there. This is really about making sure that your math is mathing. All right. Can we just agree on that particular term? So for those of you that know, you know what that means when I say your math is not mathing. But for those of you out there who may be a little bit on the proper side, that particular phrase may have thrown you a little bit. You may feel just a little confused. No worries. So let me explain to you what math is not mathing means. It means that whatever calculations or math that you've decided to do, and in this particular case, in your business, that means that I'm a uh, it ain't working. That the math is not mathing. That the two plus two should equal four, but somehow equals six in your business. And so you are making, as a result, really bad decisions based on your very off math. So how does this relate in terms of business goes? Well, I got to tell you, everyone out here is telling you that you can make six figures with your business or that you can be a millionaire. All you got to do is reach up and grab it. Um, They're use a a number of things to tell you that this is the case. I'm just going to speak to you from a standpoint of just reality, um, business acumen, uh, years of supporting actual uh, billionaires who are entrepreneurs, as well as having seats at the table of executives and seeing what really it takes to run an actual business. So I am going to speak to you from that space. Now, There's nothing with hope. There's nothing with someone encouraging you. There's nothing wrong with someone telling you that there are possibilities out there. The issue with that thing is that if you fall into that doctrine and you apply it and then you do not experience the thing that someone is telling you they applied and that, that they're successful at, you will feel like a failure. I want you to know you're not a failure. It's just that that little business mom they gave you you might as well say it, that math ain't mathin'. So that's why what works for them does not work for you. It's because it was their path. It's what they were supposed to do and it's what's worked for them. But you have other variables that don't work for you. So what I want you to do is I want you to really begin to focus on real 
foundational and I don't want to say common sense because all sense is not common, uh, but just real basic business facts. So here's the first thing I want you to take into consideration. Just because you want to be successful does not mean that you will be successful. Desire, drive, purpose, passion, all of that is definitely a necessity when it comes to ingredients to be a, being a successful business person. But at the foundation of it, you have to look at two very simple things. Number one, your business model, which is, you know, how is your business designed to make dollars and cents, right? You have to look at that business model. So I look at business models in very different ways. I look at it as a one-time transactional. I look at it through licensing. I look at it through passive income. I look at it through merchandising. I look at it through subscriptions and memberships. There's all these different models out there that you can actually use in your business. The phenomenal thing about diversifying your business's financial portfolio is that you do not have to only choose one stream for your business to flow. In matter of fact, if you only choose one stream, I guarantee you, you will not be successful for a long period of time. Even if your success is happening at this moment with this one stream, it is not something that's going to allow you success for long periods of time. Why? Because there's ebbs and flows to everything where one stream may dry up, another stream may be flowing really well. And so you want the flexibility and you want to be agile or have the agility to be able to bounce from stream to stream when there are going to be ebbs and flows with the financial success of your business, right? I feel like I said a lot of words. So I want to make sure you follow. You want to have multiple streams, So think about those different business models and how you can use your different business models because all your streams are not going to flow very well all at once. And you want to be able to um, not have a financial burden because you're only focused on one thing with your business. So business models, very important, right? So making sure that you have identified what business model you're going to employ. And remember, you can use multiple business models. Just don't take on all at once when you are starting out. Start one, get that going, stand it up to steady state. Then you can go ahead and employ another one, stand that one up to steady state. And you can scale up as you are in that steady state. So once you're in that space, guys, right? Then I want you to think about that second thing that you will definitely want to take a look at, which would be what are your operational expenses in comparison to your operational income? That, oh, is key. I don't care how much you want to be a millionaire. If you do not look at your operational expenses in comparison to your operational income, you may find that no matter how much your desire is to be a millionaire, you're just constantly working in the red. So if you're working in the red, that means that you are not doing well and that you are in the negative when it comes to your revenue. And if you are operating in the black, that means that you are profitable and you are seeing profit margins that are favorable to your company. So like I said, I believe in purpose, passion. I believe in drive. I believe in ambition. I also believe that you have to have the desire to want to be great, but I also know that you have to have very basic business acumen in order for you to be great. And so this is why I am not going to sit here and give you tons of, you can do it, you you know, go live your life in abundance. Uh, Listen, listen, these are things that we are beyond. We have um, explored words that uplift us and get us all excited and make us feel warm and fuzzy. We explored that in, I would say, year one or two of our business journeys. But at this point, if you're in year five on, we got to have a different kind of conversation. So here's why. Because as you begin to grow and as you begin to scale up, at some point, you're going to want to say to yourself, I need to do something different. And then you're going to do something like, I don't know, go on to social media. And while you go on to social media, you're going to start scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And when you scroll, you're going to see things like, oh, this person just opened up this new location. And you're still at home with your business and you're thinking, I'm such a failure. You're not. Then you're going to say to yourself, oh my gosh, this person here, this person is rolling out new merchandise. Oh, this is awesome. 
And you're going to think to yourself, but I don't even think I want to have merchandise. Am I a failure? Am I a slacker? Am I not doing what I'm supposed to be doing with my business? No, nah, maybe, maybe not. Here's the deal. If you are not identifying the right business model for your business, how do you even know what opportunities to be able to explore? That's one. And number two, if you haven't really taken the time to map out the operational expenses against your operational revenue, how do you know what the chances are for you to even be financially successful? Now, why are we talking about this? What is the one thing that I watched that piqued my interest that made me say, I need to spend some time talking to my bosses about this? Well, If you've spent any time with me, you know that my favorite thing to watch are documentaries. And prior to that, my favorite thing to listen to are podcasts. So I am going to talk to you a little bit about a really well-known company that did not take a look at their business model prior to going into business, getting investors, and really putting themselves in financial turmoil because they just believed they could. Right, they just just because they believed they could be successful, they believed that they could be great. They believed that they had all of that hot air and extraness that sounds great, but really does not add up to anything. Because say it with me, their math just ain't mathin'. So, what is this wonderful, awesome, tragic uh, example that I have? Oh. I got it. We work. So watching a documentary called We Crash. Prior to that, listen to the podcast called We Crash. And this particular podcast and show on Hulu was all about the story of Adam Newman, who was the CEO and co-founder of We Work. Now, I'm going to tell you a little something about We Work. I loved We Work. Like, who would not love WeWork? When you walk into the buildings of WeWork, the one thing I will tell you that they automatically pick that is amazing is beautifully, like, it's positioned real estate. They pick the best buildings and then completely outfit the buildings in a way that speaks to the emotional spirit of an entrepreneur, Because when you talk about community and you talk about being in a space of like-minded people, I think that is something that really pulls in entrepreneurs. The, I mean, not for nothing, even just saying that made me feel warm and fuzzy on the inside. Because as much as I want to say, we got to get past the warm and fuzzies, anybody who knows me knows, but I love warm and fuzzies. So... I love walking into a space. I went to an event there, um, loved how, you know, they had like cold brew on tap. Um, You know, you can get your coffee, your waters, really great workspaces. And a couple of times I tried to um, actually think about getting co-working space there. The problem was the math wasn't mathing for me because I could not see me paying the amount I needed to pay for actual office space because I did not want um, a desk. I wanted an actual office. And so I had some other thoughts in mind around owning property. So getting the actual rental space and co-working space just didn't work for me. But nonetheless, I saw the appeal of the um, of of. We work. I saw how awesome it was. I definitely, like I said, every now and then I would go back to WeWork and I would be like, oh, I got to get a space here um, because I loved it. But once again, not only did I not see the cost of renting a place, but for me, then I had to add in the cost of me getting to Philly. Like I was actually spending more money than not. And I realized that although it felt like a good look, financially, it just wasn't. The interesting thing about WeWork or the thing that really caught my attention was the fact that when Adam first decided to talk about this concept and he first decided to share it during, it was like a pitch contest, one of the judges were like, you're either going to end up in jail or bankrupt because he did not believe in the model. Now, there are some models out there that are doing really well. Industrious is one of them um, that I can think of off the bat. And there's a lot of smaller uh, co-working groups that have definitely flourished that are independent that I think have done, you know, a great job at at creating community. But 
With WeWork, they were just like world domination. Their growth was exponential. Their growth as far as their presence in the market. I think that they owned like 38% of the of the market when it came to co-working space and they wanted to basically take over all of it. But at some point, even after they had gotten crazy amounts of money from their investors, the reality is, is that the investors wanted a return on their investment back. So when you look at the bright and shiny things, you would say, ooh, bright and shiny, we work is really successful because it looks really great. Because that's what we tend to do as human beings. We look at the really shiny carrot and we say, because it's shiny and because it's pretty and because it's here in our face, this must mean that it's a successful thing. The reality is, is that, well, it wasn't. And there's one particular scene that I thought was absolutely interesting that made me say, whew, I got to talk about this on this podcast, which was they would do all these things just to get a sale. So they would, and the sale would be either to get people to sign up for, to be investors or to get people to sign up to um, actually lease a space. So they would give either like a free year of space to say that they're at capacity or they would tell someone like, oh, we're going to jack up the rent for other places so that you can get your return. And it, it just, nothing was sustainable and nothing really made sense because say with me, what was it mathing? The math was not mathing. So at that point, what ended up happening was that, you know, they're sitting there and they're realizing, holy crap, one of their investors that invested this crazy amount of money is looking for a crazy amount of return. And so they were super excited thinking like we've made over a million dollars and they were like, no, but we didn't because while we made over a million, we spent over a million and five. So we're actually $500,000 in the hole. I'm making up those numbers. I think it was way more, but I remember the conversation in the, in the uh, document, I mean the actual show. And that was the actual, like it was, that was the gist of the conversation because that's what we like to do. We like to talk about the amount of money we made. We love to talk about what was our income. What was the amount of money that came in? What we failed to think about was, well, what were our expenses? How much did it cost for us to stock up every bar that people are drinking things for free at each location? I have a simpler thing to think about. How much did it cost for us to turn on the lights in each location? I don't know. How much did it cost for us to be able to equip each bathroom with enough toilet tissue for each person who needs to use it? Because we're thinking about the fancy things. Let's just talk about the necessities of running in a place like that. How much does it cost for us to actually fund the salaries of the people who work at WeWork? How much does it cost for us to even have people to clean up the locations at WeWork? I mean, if you can think about it, expenses don't have to be over the top expenses. It could be expenses that are necessities to the functionality of, of a actual organization. And so when we don't think about that, and we're only thinking about okay, well, then we either need to get more investors to fund us the money to cover this, or we need to sell, sell, sell. What we're not thinking about is, but how is this sustainable? And literally, as Adam turns to his finance guy, he says, well, we just need more investors. The guy says, okay, turns over a cup, pokes a hole in the bottom of the paper cup with a pencil, and then he flips it right side up. He then grabs a pitcher of water, and he then pours water into this cup, now with a hole at the bottom of it. And he says... I'll get more investors, but when they give us more money, this is what's going to happen. And he said, this model is not sustainable. I close this out by saying that as you look to the right and the left of you of all these phenomenal entrepreneurs out there, I do not want you to lose focus. I do not want you to forget to, to forget the importance of identifying whether or not you've selected the right business model for your business? And is it sustainable? And all of the choices that you decide to make around whether or not you're going to go after this customer or this opportunity, ask yourself, are my decisions sustainable? Better yet, ask yourselves, is my math mathing? Because without that, 
It doesn't matter what it looks like on the outside. You will not be able to sustain your business model. I am thinking I might need to do maybe a little workshop on different business models and what it looks like to actually have certain price models tied to that so that you can really see what business models work for you. Think about it. If someone has a business model where they're selling Fabergé eggs, and I don't know how much Fabergé eggs go for, but let's say they go for like $100 per egg. Well, guess what? If you're a cupcake queen and you're selling cupcakes that are like 3 or $4 a cupcake, you can't listen to this person about what they're doing because their model is different than yours. What they can do and afford when it comes to operating, it's different than yours. Now, that means that maybe you have to sell 10 times or 100 times more than the person that's next to you that's selling Fabergé eggs. But at the end of the day, you got to say my widget and this person's widgets don't generate the same income. So my choices and what I do can't be the same. I really want you to start looking at your business from the mindset of a business person. And just keep in mind that everything that shines is not good for you. And if the math is not mathing, then sit down and see what works. And that's what you employ. So with that, guys, I got to go get my little one. I hope this has helped you. And starting to think about ways that you may want to uh, really think about your business and how you want to explore or expand and things that you need to do moving forward. Because guess what? I want you to be the best boss out there. So everyone, have an awesome, wonderful, and most of all, blessed day. Bye.